Hello everyone. Today I'm going to explain very simply what you're looking at when you see an ECG. When a standard 12 lead ECG tracing gets put in front of you, this is what you'll typically see. If you're not familiar with ECGs, then this can look very daunting, so let's break it down. The 12 lead ECG looks at electrical activity of different parts of the heart. It then shows a pattern that represents this electrical activity. Let's for now only talk about normal electrical activity. This will be the pattern that you see repeated. The pattern consists of a P wave, followed by a negative Q deflection, positive R deflection, negative S deflection, then followed by a T wave. The deflections of the Q, R and S together make up what is known as the QRS complex. So now we have the P wave, QRS complex and T wave. As I earlier said, these patterns represent electrical activity of the heart. The P wave represents depolarization of the atria, and it is therefore when the atria contract. The QRS complex represents depolarization of the ventricles, and it is when the ventricles contract. The T wave then represents repolarization of the ventricles, and is when the ventricles relax. This is all an ECG consists of. We then look for abnormalities of these different segments to help identify any problems. On a side note, what you'll immediately notice when looking at the 12-lead ECG tracing is that at different parts, these complexes look different. This is because each part of the ECG is looking at a slightly different area of the heart, determined by which ECG lead that part is representing. There are nine actual ECG leads that you position on the patient. Six going across the patient's chest from right to left, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. There are three limb leads, AVR, AVL and AVF. AVR goes on the right shoulder, AVL on the left shoulder and AVF on the left foot. The final three leads of the 12 lead ECG are virtual. Leads 1, 2 and 3 are tracing derived by the ECG machine using a combination of the activity recorded by other leads. So, this is the ECG you see. Here, I have grouped together the leads that look at certain parts of the heart. Leads V1 to V4 look at the anterior, anterior septal aspects of the heart. Leads V5, V6 and AVL look at the lateral aspects of the heart. Leads 2, 3 and AVF look at the heart inferiorly. If you think about it, this all makes sense. Looking at the diagram showing the positions of the leads on the patient, V5, V6 and AVL are all on the left, so it would make sense that they are looking at the lateral aspect of the heart. Likewise, leads V1 to V4 are more medial, and so look, and so look at the anterior, anterior septal aspects of the heart. AVF is a lead positioned inferior to the heart, and so is looking at the heart inferiorly. As I mentioned earlier, the virtual leads are made using a combination of the other leads. Lead 2 is derived from a combination of AVR and AVF. Lead 3 from a combination of AVL and AVF. And so inevitably, by, by being derived from AVF, lead 2 and 3 look at the heart inferiorly. So hopefully now that this makes sense to you, it will be easier to remember and apply. So in summary, the P wave represents atrial depolarization and contraction. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization and contraction. Groups of leads together represent the electrical activity of different parts of the heart. And so that's ECGs in a nutshell. So now you know what you're looking at when you see an ECG. Check out the next tutorial explaining the step-by-step -step approach to assess whether an ECG is normal or has any abnormalities. I hope that was useful. Thanks.